Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. Cheltenham returns this weekend with Cheltenham Trials Day taking place on Saturday, as well as some top quality action from Doncaster on ITV. Really looking forward to the action. Alongside my esteemed panel here, we have our West Country correspondent, James Stevens, our betting editor, Keith Melrose, and as always from Unibet, we've got Brett Williams once again. Brett, I'm sure you're going to be at Cheltenham this weekend with the Unibet hurdle being one of the highlights on the card there. And we've also got the rearranged Clarence House some Saturday at Cheltenham. Yeah, it's quite a contrast, isn't it, to, to seven days ago when we were trying to sort of scrabble some action from Lingfield and, and get a little bit excited about it. I mean, if you're a fan of, of, of jump racing, you cannot help but be excited by the weekend's fair. As you said, it is, of course, the Univet Hurdle taking centre stage at Cheltenham and plenty of other top class races to complement the car. Then, of course, you've got some great sport up on the time war at Doncaster. So there really is something for everyone, and I am very much looking forward to it, that is for sure. Yeah, this is often the the last real weekend in in Britain where we get kind of big Cheltenham clues, obviously with the DRF from Ireland, and then we kind of, kind of make our minds up of who could be winning some of the big races in March. We'll crack on, we've got plenty of races to get through, we'll catch up with Keith and James in just a second, but we'll start off our preview with the 115 at Cheltenham. This is a handicap chase, premier handicap, over two and a half miles. Unibet's betting at the time of recording have Il Rodoto as the 7-2 favourite, Excello 6-1, Victorino is 13 to 2. Hitman is 7 to 1. Grander Dam is 17 to 2. Easy's that 9 to 1. And we're looking at double figures about the rest of the film. We start off the show again this week with a good offer. We've got our money back if second or third, Brett. Yeah, if you're betting with Unibet from 9 o'clock on Saturday, if you're back the second or the third in this 115 at Cheltenham, we will, of course, be giving you your money back as cash in what is a cracking race, as you said, that El Rodito. Just about our market leader, just touched off by Fugitive in that big handicap uh, back in, in December. This is, again, a real competitive um, contest, but I'm really keen here um, on Nicky Henderson. I think he's got some cracking chances at both Charlton. He's got 14 runners on Saturday. Um, I really like um, Excello. Um, I know that the yard think quite a lot of him. He's not that big, but I tell you what, he jumps like a buck. I actually saw him score at seven barrows. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and jumping really is the name of the game for him. As I said, he's not that big, but he, he jumped beautifully around by Nascot last time in, in the graduation chase, uh, beating solo. He's in a handicap for the first time off a mark of 146, which is plenty high enough, but sort of just speaking to Nicky for his Unibet blog, I think he still thinks that's a, a pretty workable mark of, of 146, and we have seen strong support for. Uh, for Excello, he was eight to one a couple of hours ago. Now into around eleven to two, so strong support um, for Excello. He's the one I, I quite like. I think and um, Victorino could be quite interesting as well um, for Venetia Williams. Obviously, a good effort last time of top weight at Ascot has been put up again in the weights for that, so has got to continue improving. Um, whether whether there is more sort of room in the locker for improvement, time will tell. Um, but it does look a cracking race. I'm not a, not on Ilrodi, so I think um, he's, he's got up again in the weights. He, career high mark for him so I'm going to draw a line through him Excello for me in the 115. Okay Excello in the opening race for Brett. Keith I'm going to come to you I think the fascinating horse for me in here is the top weight which was Hitman because I never thought of Hitman as a Cheltenham horse always as an entry specialist but obviously finished third in the Ryanair last year which it wasn't a massive surprise because he has the ability but like I said I thought he'd be an entry horse but he comes back here after wind surgery top weight would be a tough ass but he's definitely a talented animal. Oh, yeah, and he's pretty well handicapped off 156, mm. and that's before even allowing for Fiddy Gingell's five-pound claim. Um, he's a horse I find hard to get right. I think the element of entry specialism, I think that comes from the fact that he is just a, quite a one-paced horse, mm. so the flat tracks are likely to suit him better, and, and probably always will, even though that Cheltenham one last year, you know, that was a funny old race, that Ryanair, wasn't it? Yeah. Remember Shishkin's antics and Envoy Allen coming back out of uh, but from nowhere to win that race. You know, I, he's a horse I'm, I'm relatively happy to watch, Watch, to be honest and take it on the chin if he wins I don't doubt his talent uh, but yeah he is an interesting enough horse But and it's a race with a lot of the old, the old faces really Fugitive's running in the Clarence house but it's head aside you've got Il Rodotto who I thought got an excellent ride last time with Bryony Frost you know you, you'll criticise her for maybe going a little bit too hard but still meant a horse run a career best how can you say fairer than that mm -hmm. the horse I think is the one to bet in the race that's been overlooked a little is as easy as that for Venetia Williams who ran in the Paddy Power Gold Cup um, never really put in that race um, just out the back all the way through and then last time ended up running on the three mile two race 
on December Gold Cup Day. Went off short for that, didn't stay. Uh, made a mistake, four out, got badly hampered, three out. Put a line through that. Probably going to be better at this sort of trip. Uh, probably wants a test right enough but uh, at two and a half, but I think three and two was a stretch for him. This time last year, he was winning good races and winning very easily. And he's down to 137, which put in Shane Quinlan's three pound on top of that. That's a very appealing mark. So I thought easy as that would have been massively overlooked in a race that this is actually a deceptively warm race a lot of the time. Not sure it is this year. Uh, and I think it's there for the taking with a horse like easy as that. Okay, easy as that. Around nine to one with Unibet currently. James Stevens, the 115 at Cheltenham. Who for you? Yeah, interesting you talk about Hitman. He has been a cliff force for me for many years and I'm finally off the cliff. So if he does win, please, please look for me and seek help um, at around 120. Um, I've got two in here, but I quite like at a big price. I agree with Keith that as Cheltenham two and a half, handi- two and a half mile handicaps go, it's not the strongest. Um, the one I'm pretty sweet on here is uh, Grande Dam for Alan King, who ran a really, really good race when we saw him in the December Gold Cup. A uh, horse that's improved drastically this season. Uh, he was out of a handicap when he was fourth last time. He now gets to run off his official mark, which is essentially three pounds lower. I think the better <coughs> ground will suit him well as well. Um, horse has improved massively this season, so hopefully there's more to come. And then down the bottom, I'm intrigued by Lounge Lizard for Henry Daly, who's about 25 to 1. Um, horse that caught my eye when he finished third in the best mate at extra in October. Um, that was a really competitive handicap chase. Um, man of a people horse I'm quite keen on. He was second in that race. Any news won it. This horse looked like he was going to go and win, but just didn't quite stay at, at the end. That was three miles. He van, then ran in the, the beach chase at Aintree, which is possibly the slowest ground I've ever seen. And given I was unsure if he'd stay, he didn't stay. <laughs> he was beaten a long, long way. But what it does mean is he's back down to a mark of 130. I wonder with this horse whether he might be best uh, dropped in trip, but but ridden a bit more forward. So Lounge Lizard are massive each way prices at the bottom of the weights. Interesting. Okay, Lounge Lizard and Grand Dan, the two mentioned there for James Stevens. On to the 150, we've got the Cotswold Chase, the first mile graded action here on the postcast. Grade two over three mile, one and a half furlongs. Unibet currently have joint favourites, Royal Pagai and Stay Away Fair at 11 to four. The Real Wackers, four to one. Ahoy Senor is 11 to two. That's all right, Gino is six to one. And Capadano is the outside of the field at 15 to two. Doesn't get more competitive than this, James Stevens. It's a real difficult race to work out. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with you about competition-wise because I think there's there's a lot of horses who we know a lot about here. And I think what this will be is a really interesting race from a pace <coughs> perspective. We've seen the real Wacker make all. We've seen a hoist in your try and make all. And this race is typically one of the Gold Cup trials where it's about stamina and horses with stamina come tend to come to the fore. So that's where it, it, I find it interesting. Stairway Fay is a novice in here. That's really, really interesting. I'm a huge fan of this horse. And, and on the weights, he, he wouldn't have much of a chance, but he jumps so well. There's no doubt about that. He seems to be the one that's bringing the, the best form to the table. Most of them have been a little bit poor. So I think he's definitely definitely the horse that will the most likely winner for me. For a bet perspective, though, I'm going to go all the way down the bottom and go to Capodano for Willie Mullins. He was third over Christmas behind Gallop and Deschamp in the Savills chase. That was his best run for a long time. I thought it was a good effort. If you go back through his form, he's better on better ground. I just wonder if he's the sort of horse where if there's a lot of pace out in front, he'll be the one finishing best. Um, his jumping was a little bit, not quite sure about his jumping last time, and it is a bit if in and out. But to me, he looks the value of a race, albeit I think Stairway Fay is the most likely winner. Okay, Capadano, yeah, 15 to 2 currently uni bet. Willie Mullins and Paul Tan, and Willie Mullins with a, a big field of horses coming over to Britain for this week and even at Doncaster. So looking forward to seeing how they get on. So 15 to 2, Capadano for James Stevens. Keith Melrose, James has said that uh, Stay Away Faye, the horse to beat. Do you agree there? Uh, no, I don't, because it's, as James points out, the horse has got lots to find on these these animals. You know, he's, he's been really convincing in his novice chases so far, but he's been convincing not with his class so much as his guts and his straightforward nature. Uh, he's got another thing to do to, to step up against horses like this, but that said, it's not, it, there's a lot of question marks over a lot of these horses. Uh, 
Royal Pagai has run some good races at Cheltenham, has always seemed more comfortable at flatter tracks. I think that's all right. Gino will end up the same. He's another big horse. Uh, I don't think it's any surprise that his big day came at Newbury, a big flat track there. Real Wacker comes in under a cloud. And I've got a theory that Capadano's going for the National this year. They couldn't, they barely got him there in time last year. Uh, and I wonder if that's the aim this year. So I feel like he might be one for another day. And I ended up having thought a horse in Europe had been lucindered. You know, when you know, some of these Lucinda Russell horses, they have a couple of seasons where they improve a stone every time they make the track and then they just, you know, pop. And if he's looked like he was maybe going that way this year, but he's so talented. He won the race last year. He had a pretty deplorable campaign until this point last year too. You know, he only really came to to himself at this point on the season onwards. Uh, and I wonder if in a smaller field, you know, I wouldn't be tempted if he was five to two favourite, but he's eleven to two. I think he's he, there's enough doubt over the others to just tempt me into having a little bit on him because he is the most talented horse in the race. You could make the case for the shape of the season, suggesting he's about to come back to some sort of form. And if he does, you know, the Hoy Senor of last year would be 64 for this race, but he's 11 to 2. Okay, Hoy Senor for Keith Melrose. Didn't expect that, but yeah, 11 to 2, maybe a fair price about a horse who definitely has all the ability. Brett, it's interesting that we've mentioned Stay Away Fay plenty. You've got a, a special on the Unibet website for Stay Away Fay to win this race and any race at the Cheltenham Festival. The thing is, if he does go and win this race, it, they'd be very tempted with the Cheltenham Gold Cup, but he'd be legible for some of the novice events as well. So what do we make of the chances here? Well, as you said, um, he's probably the only contender if he wins this and wins it well, and we've all seen quite a shake-up in the market for um, for the Gold Cup. If you think he can win the Cotswold Chase on Saturday and then follow up in any race at the festival... We're fourteen to one, and what did you say? He's around three to enjoy the favourite with um, Royal Pagai to win to win Saturday's race. This is a core, because you said you know we could be sort of have an egg on our face if the horse in your comes and wins this because he said scored last year. He's not been in the best of form this time, but as as Keith's already alluded to, he's, he's arguably the most classy horse um, in this race, certainly on on this track. I just think stay away, Faye. I think it's a real shrewd move for Pornicles to run this novice against these more experienced rivals over fences. So that's got to be, I think. Um, a, a tip in itself. I was just trying to look what prices for the Gold Cup at the moment. It's 25 to 1 um, with Unibet. That price, of course, could shorten um, if he wins today. And we should just give a mention for, for the real whacker. He's got an exemplary record um, around Cheltenham. Um, his two runs this season haven't been the greatest. Didn't run too bad, I suppose, in the um, in the King George last time. Again, there could be plenty of pace on with him and uh, Hoy Senor. So I wouldn't rule out um, the real whacker, but I just think Sarah Fay is the the young the young gun the improver the improver in the field and I think he, you know I think he's the one they've all got to catch him. What's a, you know a, a good race? Whether it's, it's going to have a big impact on the Gold Cup, I don't I don't really think so. But it's a good race nevertheless. Absolutely, it certainly is. But we've had no agreement so far on the postcast. But we'll move on to a race where I'm sure there will be agreement. But it would be pretty obvious anyway. The 225 is the rearranged Clarence House Chase. Obviously, it was meant to be run at Ascot last week. Well, we're hoping for the John Bon El Fabiolo clash. Been moved to Cheltenham. Now we don't have El Fabiolo. We have John Bon as a real short price favourite. Unibet have this horse currently at 130 odds on favourite. Editor de Gite, 6 to 1. Elixir de Nuts, 12 to 1. Fugitive. 14 to 1 and Nube Negra is 16 to 1. Rather than coming to you all individually, I just want to see if anyone will actually be taking John Bonon in this race. No, have we got betting without yet, Brett, or is that to come? That will be coming later on. We've got, we have got one in distance with him. Yeah, uh, should, we, should we discuss that? Should we, should we go around and see? Because Unibet's market for the uh, current distance, Brett, do you want to just read out what, what the odds are currently? <laughs> Yeah, so if you think John Bomber will win um, up to and including seven lengths, we're 11 to 8. If you think he'll win by over seven lengths, we're, we're 13 to 8. And I was just thinking before, I thought, well, I don't actually know, is he going to win well or is he just going to scramble home? Um, I think he'll probably, I mean, the ground isn't bad there, is it? I and mean, it's not going to be a slog. I think he'll, you know, it's not going to be spring ground, but it's, it's not going to be, you know, horrendous conditions. Um, I think he'll win by over seven lengths. So I think 13 to 8 is, is the way to go with, with John Bond. I mean, it's good they've restated this race. Fair play to the Jockey yeah. Club and the VHA, but, you know, it's. I know they're even going to put up a Doncaster, weren't they? I think they're going to put more money at Doncaster for this race to be staged at there, but whatever, it's gone to Cheltenham, unsurprisingly. Mm, there we go. So, John Bond, yeah, look, over seven lengths for Brett. Keith Melrose, it sounds like you're looking for something to finish second here and quite fancy something to finish second. Uh, not so much. I mean, I'm a big fan of it, but I just feel that Fugitive's got the engine. 
Uh, he is a sort of horse that doesn't necessarily go past, but that's the only thing you could crab him on. Uh, if editor de Gite really tries to serve it up to John Bond and ends up cutting his throat to an extent, then I think Fugitive, who's a much, much bigger price, uh, could sneak through for second. But that's my only real betting interest in this race. But yeah, I've been really interested to see Fugitive. I backed him for the Melling Chase last year. I think he's got a grade one engine. Uh, and now he's at a track he loves. So it might be a chance. He's not going to beat John Bond unless John Bond does something silly. But uh, he might be the one to finish second. OK, a fugitive century horse finished second to John Bond. James Stevens over seven lengths, under seven lengths? Uh, you would never catch me betting on distance, I'm afraid. <laughs> so no interest in that. Uh, interesting what, what Keith says about fugitive. Big fan of horse as well. And, and interesting to see them go for this race rather than the handicap. Makes sense, really, that they don't want to go around top weight before Ryan Airbed and I think the last few weeks since since he won the December Gold Cup the Ryan has seemed a lot more winnable um, the one I thought to finish second possibly could be Elixir the Nuts he is a really good front runner and I think the plan will probably be to try and serve it up to John Bond and who can get past we'll see um, I thought his win at Newbury in the um, Coral Gold Cup meeting where he beat Master Cherry. That was an exceptional front running ride from Freddie Gingle. Just got out in front. And really, Master Cherry was beaten by the ride more than anything else. Look, Freddie doesn't get his claim here because it's a grade one. But nevertheless, I think this horse will try and go out in front and it will be a case of who can catch him. And John Brown probably will, but hopefully the rest don't. Just a different animal this year, Alexia, than us, isn't he? Mm. Well, yeah, he is. Yeah, I mean, many years ago, he looked he looked to be a, a really smart horse when he won the Tollworth. I mean, I thought at that point he was a mud lover and would want plenty of mud, but now he's turned out to be a horse that wants this sort of ground. And yeah, they, they've done a really good job of him because he's a classy horse on his day and they've just got him back. So, so credit to the Tizzles, really. Yeah, he'd been a little bit of a flat track bully over fences until this season and he's just completely uh, got up in the world. It's, it's been great to watch. Absolutely. So there we go. Look, we'll take that as a full agreement that John Bond will be winning the race, but a few horses to note that could be finishing second behind him in the 225. Moving on to three o'clock, it is the Unibet hurdle over two mile one furlongs, a grade two event. And Unibet currently have Lost Your Mouth as the five to six favourite. Love Envoy is five to Rubo nine to two. First Street twenty two to one, and Guard Your Dreams is thirty three to one. But we have two Super Boost race on the postcast this week, and Brett, this is one of them. Yep, so from 9 o'clock um, on Saturday morning, we'll be super boosting the price of every single runner in the inaugural running of the Unibet Hurdle. It's been so difficult for so many people to call it the Unibet Hurdle and not the Unibet International, the International or the Beulah, but it is the Unibet Hurdle. I'm looking forward to it. It's a good race, isn't it? No Constitution Hill, sadly, mm -hmm. but I think Lossy Mouth is, you know, you know, she'll obviously be a very tough nut to crack. Interesting, they're running her in this rather than going up um, to Doncaster, where she was also in that mayor's race. You've got Rubo, of course, who's got some some decent form. Funny enough, he's actually not in the Unibet champion hurdle, so if he wins, maybe they'll consider supplementing him later on down the line. And then Love Envoy as well, who probably would want the ground a little bit softer. Um, so it's a very good race, um, but I think you've got to be quite realistic. I think I think Lossie Mack will be the one they've all got to catch. You know, she she was very very good last year. Um, often we do just see these juveniles. They they do a lot of them don't tend to carry form through the following year, do they? That that is a bit of a question mm -hmm. mark. Um, but I think she, I know she's the apple of um, Rich Rich's eye. I know they they think a lot of her and they've always sort of held her in high regard. And I think her form on the form figures um a testament to that, really. Mm, certainly do. James Stevens, Lossy Mouth too good. I think Lossy Mouth will probably win. Um, just by looking at the other runners really um she was very very good horse last season uh loved the way she she progressed through the season and and the triumph win i thought was a really strong piece of form mm -hmm. i was looking to take her on at the start of a race but i looked at it and thought i thought love envoy probably needs it a bit softer rubo for all he's been really good um this race is an afterthought there's no two ways about it his original plan was the kingwell at Wincanton, but Paul Nichols being Paul Nichols, I spoke to him last week and said, what about that race now at Constitution Hills? Said, yeah, yeah, I'm tempted. And by that, I only was, was a certain there. Paul Nichols knows where prize money is, 125 grand for this. Hmm. No surprise he's there. Look, he Rubod is a really interesting horse because he keeps winning. But the question is, is what is he beating and how weak is Britain's two-mile hurdle division outside of Constitution Hill? I think it's extremely weak and I think we'll learn more from this piece of form as to 
whether Britain's two-mile hurdling division is absolutely rubbish or are we just being a bit too harsh in it? I'm on the side that he's winning races and he's a good horse, but he's not beating much. So lossy mouth, given the weights, will probably improve past him. And the other two, I, I just don't, not seen enough in their form to go. So I've lended back on lossy mouth. Um, not a race I'll be punting on, to be honest. With. I think lossy mouth will win, but a really interesting um, to see how that form plays out, what it means for the rest of the season as well. Come on then, Keith. You're, you're urging to say something here. No, I'm not particular. I was going to say about Rubo, though. How it, it's just a brilliant bit of Nichols campaigning. He's never run to a racing post rating higher than 149. And yet, in his last start, few starts, he's won races for 34k to the winner, 43k to the winner, 28k to the winner, 42k to the winner. Just been marvellously placed, the source, for the ability mm-hmm. he's got. And he has been again, because this is a chance to pick up some nice prize money. I'd be surprised if he won. But this is why Nichols has won 15 trainers' championships. Because he knows what he can, he can just he gets the best out of them prize money wise. I'm not sure. Lossy Mouth needs to improve on what she's done to justify prices like that. I thought Love Envoy might be the sort of bet in the race. I've also got a little bit of an eye out. First Street's come right down in the weights. Is the aim the county hurdle, do we think? Maybe. He's, Brett, he's a, Brett what does Nikki say? Have you, you heard much from Nikki about First Street? Well, uh, this wouldn't have been the plan originally, would it? <laughs> no, no, no. no, it's just it's a, it's a bit of a risk if the county is the aim because you know he finishes three lengths third or something. You know that one four one's completely burst, and he's chucked and he finished. He was beat less than ten lengths off one hundred and fifty two last year in the county. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was a it's a it's an interesting but potentially fairly risky bit of race planning. But I'll have my eye on him for maybe a little bit of a county hurdle plot up. Um, I thought Love Envoy maybe would be the bet narrowly, uh, just because Lossy Mouth is a little bit uh, reputation still at the moment, and I always like to get those horses beat. Uh, but sometimes they do bite me on the bum. But yeah, I, it's not that it's a race I'll definitely be watching, uh, but it's not appealing at the moment as a huge betting race. Okay, not a huge betting race. Keith, just, on, panel, just on First Street, Keith, um, interesting insight to Nicky Henson's way of thinking about this horse was when I was down there before well, for his press day ahead of the uh, King George meeting and we asked about First Street and he said, yeah, well, we, we will look at nine, what is it, 9.57, I think, how many runners there are on the Christmas hurdle and if there's not many, we'll have a go. So I, I think the county hurdle is one thing, but I think Nicky is just trying to pick up as much prize money as he can and this race is so valuable they've just thought you know what let's have a go there we go so there we go we've got two votes for lossy mouth one vote for love envoy but they are very tentative votes at that we've got one more race to cover from cheltenham which is the 335 is the cleave hurdle over three miles and look at this a 12 year old and 11 year old at the top of the market paisley park three to one we've got dashel drasher at seven to two noble yates also seven to two champs five to one botox has is nine to one a strong leader 10 to 1 and flight deck is 22 to 1 now we just all want to see paisley park win a race this season at the age of 12 like i'd love to see his horse go and win the stairs i don't think it's going to happen but i've got a feeling that if there is going to be a big day this season this is going to be it i'm a big fan of paisley park like everyone here is it's not a vintage race this shows pretty how how bad the staying uh, division is in britain currently as much as we love these horses but we've lost for on on tuesday for the french horse out the stairs hurdle which is a massive shame and it just shows how dominant the Irish are going to be in this division. Keith, I will start with you on this one here. Um, like I say, great race. We see some absolute legends of the game running, but it it really isn't great in terms of viewing for our prospects in the stairs hurdle. No, I mean, the horse that won the Grand National two years ago is the yeah. baby uh, of the bunch. It's a, it's a ridiculous thing to note, really. Uh, with the division being so weak and this being so much Paisley Park sort of race, I thought he was the right favourite. I probably won't back him, but the market's found the right favourite. Uh, Moby Yates have been interested want to watch. You think they're going for entry again. You know, if you thought they might have done anything a little bit fancier, then you'd be interested. But I think that is just, uh, he's over here to pick up a bit of prize money. That being the case, you know, Paisley Park got the measure of Dashiell Drasher from last time at what would probably be Dashiell Drasher's course. Champ, What's Champ still got? He's 12. He's not shown that good form for coming up 15 months. So, And Botox Haas and the rest have a fair bit to find. Is the right favourite. I probably won't back him. I'll cheer a little bit if he wins. Yeah, absolutely. Brett Williams, it'll be some scenes. The house will come down if Paisley Park were to win on Saturday. It'd be amazing if he could win the Stairs Hurdle, but I just don't see it happening. But I could definitely see him winning this race on Saturday. 
Yeah, well, I have to look back at the the Roll of Honor, but I'm not sure if any horse would has, has ever won it four times before. He's won it three, of course. Easy, but I mean, this is the sort of race you just sit back and you, know, you don't necessarily have to have a bet, just enjoy it. I do agree with you. There's there's no sort of young, improving stare coming through the ranks. They're all they're all 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds. They're all sort of rated a point between all of them. Um, Paisley Park, we are price boosting Paisley Park on, on the day. So if you fancy him to win, you know, then obviously you're going get, to get the best odds with, with you. Unibet. I've actually written on my notes here, it's just a lottery. <laughs> but oh, Botox has got Vices for the first time. Strong Leader's got Cheap Piece on for the first time. Strong Leader, the youngest in the race. Um, obviously, he's got plenty to find on, on, on ratings and on form on that run in the Raoul Peel last time. But you know, Botox, Botox has, you, you could perhaps make a bit of a case for him with, with the, the first time headgear, but he was, he was beaten in the race last year. And I can't really see any reason why why he could change that to this time around. But no, just a race to enjoy, I think. Okay, a race to enjoy for Brett Williams. Go on, and James Stevens finishes off at Cheltenham with a winner. Well, I can't believe you're you're all getting stuck in Paisley Park. I'm afraid I'm dash or drasher through and through. So, um, sadly, there's not been enough rain, so I, I don't think he, I don't think he'll be winning. I, I get what Keith said about Champ, but he's the one I was drawn to, just because I, I'm not well. Well, first and foremost, he hasn't run well for a long time. But the race at Ascot was such a muddling race; it's so hard to judge, and I think it makes this even tougher. I mean, the race was run at such a such a cruel Paisley Park didn't even hit a flat spot. <laughs> which at the age of a, was 11 yeah. going on 12 is quite bizarre champs had wind surgery for a second time he was a bit sort of rusty it wasn't the best run in the world but he's an old wasn't horse fit, now was what's that no it wasn't fit was he no he didn't look right i just wonder whether they say i know it's his second time having wind surgery but sometimes it can take a couple of races in i also think he's better going left-handed i think his jumping's better going left-handed particularly over hurdles so at the prices, I thought it is an open race, and maybe just maybe he he's he's one to be on side. And um, yeah, he he's, he's he was disappointing in this race before, but I think I think he goes round round Cheltenham. So so champ for me, but um, yeah, interesting race. Not 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 the strongest division as you said. I think Ireland has got the strength, and I I think it's hugely disappointing with the, with the French horse not being there. Yeah. I mean, Français, I'm not sure if he'll turn up. It's a bit of a golden time for. French jump racing after a hell of a spell in the doldrum. So it's it's a shame that we might not really get the, the two most exciting horses turn up at Cheltenham, but more, more fun for Willie Mellons. So I'm uh, slightly like counterpoint to that French stuff. Um, I think there's a handful of very good horses in France. Uh, Thelem was one of them. I was really excited to see him come across. Uh, but yeah, that was... Um, you know, you're seeing the creme de la creme. I'm, I've been handicapping the toy this year. And, yeah, those horses look like different species when they turn up against those horses at a toy. Absolutely, yeah. Look, the French are definitely... It's, oh, it's a rising force, both in the flat and jumps game of the French racing. So, um, yeah, I, I, it is a massive shame to lose for them. But it, it is what it is. And, and like we say, the Irish are dominant in the staying hurdle division. Now, a lot of our viewers, listeners... Will be doing their form study for the weekend. They may even be wanting to look at race replays that are now available on the Racing Post app. If you've got members club, it's currently 50% off the first three months. You can get hold of that. We've got Doncaster coming next. Welcome back to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. Sam Hart, James Stevens, Keith Melrose and Brett Williams, spinning you through the weekend action on ITV. We go across to Doncaster now, and we start off with the 205 there, which is the Yorkshire Rose Mare's Hurdle, just over two miles for this race. Astro Diamond's currently top in the market, 6-4. Gala Masso is 13-8, to eight, under control. 3 to 1 say goodbye 11 to 1 Stainsbury girl is 25 to 1 and Redrella is 250 to 1 with Unibet Willie Mullins at the top of the market with two very talented mares uh James Stevens which one's going to be winning or are neither uh again it's a tricky race to discuss and we discussed the sort of quality of the hurdle hurdlers in Britain compared to Ireland I think Ashro Diamond brings the best form into the race, having finished third behind Impera Pass and Tehopu. At Fairy House, I thought that was a... She's not in their league, but she doesn't need to be in their league. She's down into Mayor's company here. Um, 
yeah, I, I think she was the most likely winner. It's it's a bit of a confusing race because the the ability of a moment's horse, Galamaco. She, she won a good race in France, but that was in May. What form she's going to be in come January is hard to assess. Um, but yeah, Ashray Diamond was the logical pick for me, and it seems like she's the stable first choice with Patrick Mullins on board as well. Okay, Ashra Diamond for James Stevens. Keith Morris, who for you in the two hundred five? I think. Tell the story of this race. If Gallimard's so strong, I'll be very interested in her. I think she might win the Mayor's Hurdle. She's always been more of a two-and-a-half-mile horse than a two-miler. Uh, she showed that when she went to France. She beat Lassange Blue. You know, I've talked about French and how, you know, the depth's not necessarily there, but Lassange Blue is definitely the best of their four-year-olds in the autumn. Uh, he won, he, he smashed up a, a decent horse called Whimper and then won a grade one in the big November meeting. And she, in turn, smashed him having been stepped up to nearly two and a half miles she that's the doubt she's two miles here uh, she'll beat the rest in this race if she's fit uh, but if the markets if the market speaks against her she's just not going to win because it means she's not fit i do think she might beat lossy mouth in the mayor's hurdle over two and a half um so if the market speaks positively i've got to be with her because i think if she's valued to beat lossy mouth who's odds on for the unibet hurdle this afternoon then she's got to be really well fancy to win this race OK, Gala Masaya, if the market's strong, then Keith would be with this horse, but definitely worth keeping an eye on the market for the Mayor's Hurdle with Gala Masaya, who Keith think may beat Lossy Mouth on the day. And Brett, who do you like in the first race to cover from Doncaster? Yeah, just just to uh, continue what Keith was saying there, Gala Masaya, if you do fancy her for the Mayor's, she's 5-1 to one with, with Unimet, if you want to get on, because that, again, that price is like to shorten if she scores scores a Donny. Uh, yeah, I mean, as you say, I think just money, go with the, go with the money, whichever one is, 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 is better back than the other, then that's that's the one to decide with. I think probably Astro Diamond would just about be the one, just, just gets the edge for me. The fact she's had a run this season, so that would have sharpened her up nicely and, you know, she should come into this off the back of a good run last time. And um, just a quick mention for Under Control, um, who I know Nick has always thought a lot of her. He's really held her in very high regard. She beat Iberica Lord last year at Sandan, of course. He came out and then and then won the the um the Unibet Greatwood. That's strong form. She was very disappointing though at Newbury on her second start um behind Hansard and, and Chalk as Nicky said, you know, we thought well, Nick and Nicko thought he had the race one, two out, and then she just stopped like she'd been shot. <clears throat> which suggests maybe she's got a small issue with her win, which is what they have done. They have called tries to her palette. Whether it does make any difference, because they said she'd never made any noise, you know, in a work or in the race, but maybe just sort of just a slight tightening of that would have, would have sorted it out. But on all known form, you know, I'm on the ratings as well. She, she's got to improve a little bit. But if you're just looking for a bit of value, maybe you could go along with her. But I do think that some um, the Willie Mullins uh, trained will, will train the winner of this race for sure. With which one? But no, I'm going with Astro Diamond. OK, two votes for Ashford Dye and one vote for Garland So, but some good insight there into Nikki's runner in the race as well. Moving on to the 240 then, which is the River Don Novices Hurdle. Another grade two event, just over three miles for this one here. And Unibet's current, Unibet's current betting market looks like this. Welcome to Cartridge is 5-2. to two. Destroy the evidence is 7-2. to I love my bay, 11-2. to A spirit de potier is 7-1. to one. Kerry Hill... 15 to range is 8 to 1. I'm looking at double figures about the rest of the field in here. Um, Keith, I'll start with you. Now, welcome to Cartries. Was very hyped up towards the start of the season. One in really interesting fashion, I thought, last time. I mean, this horse just plugged and plugged and plugged. We're looking at a right old stayer here, aren't we? We are, and that's the case with most of these horses, to be honest. A lot of these horses, and the sort of horses that win this race, tend to be horses mm. that are bred to stay really strongly in time. When I'm looking down this field, that's sort of what I'm looking for. We've got to balance that a little bit against how ready and how professional they are at this stage of their careers. It's the very slight niggle with a horse that I would put up, and that's Kerry Hill, who's just looked like a big baby in his two runs so far. He's a big horse by the look of things. Um, just ran all over the place when he made his, his uh, debut win over hurdles at Kelso. And then he was not beaten far at all, just rolled all over the place coming down the hill at Cheltenham when he was fourth behind Shanna Bob in that uh, that good grade two novice at the December meeting. Uh, I have looked at his pedigree just while we're doing this. And to be honest, it's it's smart stairs, but dogs. Uh, Golden Chief is in there. He was he was a right old, right old sow, so he was. And I think... You can't libel horses, so I'm sure Boychuk was a bit like that too. He's the other uh, Dam's half-brother that was quite good. So maybe it's not an experience, maybe it's temperament. But at this stage of their career, you give a horse like that the benefit of the doubt. This horse has got useful staying handicap chaser written all over him to me at the moment. So I think I might be inclined to take a wee chance on him. And because he's you know, he's trained by Rich Jefferson, you're going to get far more in the way of a price than you would if he was trained by one of the big southern yards. 
Absolutely, but ridden by the champion Brian Hughes, um, who gets a great tune out of horses, especially at Doncaster. Brett, I'll come to you next because this is a super boost race. Um, it's our second super boost race on ITV this weekend, so boosting uh, each of the runners in this race. Yeah, it's a super boost in every single runner in this. And what's a, a good race? As you said, it, it is a race where you see a lot of good stairs, future good stairs win it. I think even Neptune Colons actually went up when I look back at the previous winners of it. Um, yeah, obviously, welcome to Cartridge. He's going to be suited by the step up in trip. Went over 2-5 at, um, at Ascot last time. In a race that doesn't actually look that great. There's only been one um, horse come out and, and run since then. And that was well beaten at Plumpton last week. I think it also finished fifth in that when it finished uh, third at Plumpton. So how strong that, that Ascot race is, only time will tell. But obviously, Mark and McCarthy doesn't know that. And he, he could improve um, for the step up in trip. I'm just going to take a line, though, uh, through that Shanna Bob run at, um, at Chat. And I'm really keen on, on Destroy the Evidence. Oh, that was a solid effort um, for, for Kim Belly. His horses are in good form. David Bass won this race actually a couple of years ago on Barters Hill, I think, for, for Ben Paul. And so just draw the evidence for me. And just to mention for, for ranges, I think around eight, nine, uh, nine to one for Sam Thomas. This one by um, Shan to uh, owned by the, the Potters, stepping up in trip, improved the step up to two, four at Chepstow last time on very, very heavy ground. This race has been the plan for, for quite some time. So I hope the step up in, in distance will suit him as well he's got to improve on form um but you know i wouldn't rule him out each way um range at around 10 to 1 but from a winning point of view i do think destroy the evidence of the one to side with okay destroy the evidence for brett but an each way angle with range there also in the river don so super boosting each of the runners james stevens who will the super boost be going on uh destroy the evidence for me um i agree with a lot of keith says about about experience in a race like this and and destroy the evidence brings with him plenty of experience won two average races at Kempton but I was impressed by his run at Cheltenham last time Ryan Channel Bob considering I think this horse really wants good ground as well um, and it was quite soft come come the December meeting so I don't think conditions suited him and he still ran very very well um, look he's probably not going to become it, it, it this is a race where you've had what the real wacker ran in this um, stairway Fay was second in this last year it's a race which produces horses and, and horses come out and improve from it and, and i don't think that destroy the evidence will be the best of them in in years to come but i think he is the best of them at this point in time and i think he'll win okay yeah, destroy the evidence like i say around seven to two of unibet currently is the way to go for both brett and james stevens Kerry hill for uh, mr melrose Lo moving on to our final race that we'll be covering the 315 which is the great yorkshire handicap chase over Three miles in the market. Currently has a 13-2 favourite in Famous Bridge. Forward plan and Sweet Will 7-1. Captain Noor is 8-1. A real money horse this week. Surrey Quest 17-2. Mr Coffee and Can Do Kid both 10-1. 12-1 and bigger the rest. Yeah, I was going to say Captain Noor saw a bigger, much bigger prices towards the start of the week. Around 2016s and a lot of money coming for this horse. And there is extra places actually available in this race, Brett. Is that correct? Yeah, so Five places um, in the Great Yorkshire at uh, 3.15 on Saturday, which hopefully will just help you out try and select the winner because these races are always tricky to, to try and solve. You need a horse that sort of stays well, handles the ground. Well, actually, I think it's good ground, isn't it, for Doncaster this week? So it mm -hmm. shouldn't be interesting, actually. Um, with regards to who I think will win it, you've probably got no interest anyway, but I've narrowed it down to about four. Um, Surrey Quest. Um, a, a very smart horse for, for Toby Laws now, two from two for the, the former assistant to Nicky Henderson, of course, who you actually used to train um, Surrey Quest. Um, it was impressive, I thought, in the Mandarin, but he is seven pound higher, so again, he's got he's got to improve. <laughs> Captain Orders, you said, always money for this horse, is down to a very, very attractive handicap mark. I think he's one two one or, or one two two. Um, yeah, we won off one two seven at, at Ascot last year, so he's potentially well treated. Can do kid, you know where you stand with him. He's pretty consistent, but I think Famous Bridge is a favourite. Um, but he's got some rock solid form. I think he's won six of his fourteen races. He, he stays all day. He won the Tommy Bootle last time. And I don't, to be honest, think a, a four pound rise is, is is that harsh. So it's rare you go for a favourite in these sort of races. But no, I do think that um, that Famous Bridge uh, is the uh, is the one to side with in what is a you know a compelling renewal of the of the Great Yorkshire. 
Mr. Coffee will probably go and win, won't he? So, oh, no, don't. Don't do that to me. Don't <laughs> do that to me. Um, the biggest cliff horse for most viewers and listeners, I'd imagine, Mr. Coffee. Uh, but Famous Bridge is the, the main dart for Brett, a few mentioned uh, alongside, though. Keith, I'll come to you. Uh, you in staying handicap, Chase. I love hearing your opinions on these. Go on, who wins this? Uh, well, I've had a couple of bets in the race already. Possibly won't include any more. Cap Zanor was one of them. He was in early in the week. I got, I think it was 14s I got. But you can just, Christian Williams loves to lay horses out for these races. This horse has been third, third and second in the last three runnings of this race. He's got him right down the weights. Uh, second to Cooper's Closs last year, who obviously went on to run so well in the Scottish National as well behind Kitty's Light. And last year, you know, Kitty's Light, Basically, Williams saw that as getting the horse handicapped to right all the wrongs when he'd finished placed in those big handicaps before. I think he's going to do the same with Captain Orr, to be honest. Uh, it's a competitive enough race. He wouldn't have been allowing for this deeper field, I don't think. But uh, off 122, he is rated on to one. He's a pound out the weights. Jack Tudor, he was booked. It was his only ride he was booked for on Monday morning, Jack Tudor. And it's the lowest. He doesn't do 10-2 very often. No. Uh, so I thought that was a big clue. You know, it's... It's always hard to tell when's a big day for these Williams horses, but back in the season in races of run well and before is usually a good guide. So I thought Captain Orr was the main one. I've had a little bit on sale away at twenties. I think flat tracks, good ground are exactly what he wants. He's a horse I had on my radar that uh, run when he beat Forward Planet here in April. Uh, it was a really good time and suggested he was a, a horse to watch out for. I may have a little look. If I'm gonna have any more bets uh, to boost any post portfolio, maybe be Richmond Lake at huge prices. He shouldn't be a huge price. He's a very, very talented horse. Possibly finished for the season by winning in that horrible ground at entry. Uh, but that's a big assumption for him to be 25 to 1 plus. So may have a few shekels on him just to make sure I don't lose out because he's a, a horse I like a lot. Again, another few darts being thrown, but Captain Orr seems the main one for Keith Murrows and James Stevens. You can finish us off at Doncaster. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Keith on Captain Ord. I was well aware of that, of that booking on Monday. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't take 14s, but I, I did certainly get involved. Uh, didn't think the horse ran too badly at Newbury last time either. I, I thought that was a promising run, which suggests there was enough in the tank to go and win a big race. And also, if you look at this horse's record, um, when it's been odds of 10 to 1 or lower, third, uh, beaten seventh, uh, beaten ninth, which was a bit of a write-off, first, uh, second, all the other runs he's finished nowhere. But it says this horse is good when... when when the time is right. So Captain Ord, he loves it round Doncaster. Good run last year. Um, one at a bit of a price. I thought Whistle in the Dark was interesting with cheap piece added. Horse hasn't quite delivered on the promise of the end of last season where he looked like he was going to be quite exciting in these big races. Was well beaten in the Paddy Power, but didn't run too badly in a handicap here over this in December. That's quite an interesting form perspective because the, the first four of which he was fourth and stay away, I think, was in that race as well, are all in here. So that's an interesting form. Forward plan won that race. This horse looked like he was threatening for a while. I just wonder whether he had quite a busy spring last season, whether that was just taking a toll. He's been kept off the track since. Cheap pieces added, about 25 to 1. Interesting each race out. Whistle in the dark. OK, there we go. So there's plenty of different selections for the Great Yorkshire Handicap Chase, but as Brett says, Mr Coffee will probably end up going and beat them all. Um, so we'll just wait and see on Saturday. So we're going to be back with our other selections and our best bets shortly after this. I want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uniboosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast brought to you by the Racing Post. Sponsored by Unibet, you still have Sam Hart, James Stevens, Keith Melrose and Brett Williams taking you through the weekend action. We've covered all of ITV's races, but there's plenty more top quality action from the tracks we've actually covered in Cheltenham and Doncaster and also elsewhere for the weekend. Our West Country correspondent, James Stevens, you're going to tell us what else there is at Cheltenham this weekend that we haven't covered. Yeah, well, I mean, from a betting perspective, it's it's a really, really good day because you've got those two good handicaps. Um, I, I'm going to start, though, by giving a festival tip. 
right. um, well in advance because I think the price is going to go when Milantino runs well behind Sergino and Burdett Road. This horse to me is a Fred Wind horse all day long. Um, ran pretty, ran well behind Burdett Road. Was sent off favour that day and the vibes from France, Keith may well know more than me, but we're really strong about it. The vibes from this, you getting from Milantino just as strong? Uh, I, well, it wasn't so much vibes. I the form he was he had form that yeah. tied in that kept working out. He had for and you know these three year olds in France are fizzed up, and I wonder how whether they'll catch up with him in time. But I thought at that moment in time, his form was was really quite persuasive in that. I backed him that day. Uh, mm. So yeah, no, I'd, it wasn't so much vibes, but that he'd got form that tied in with all the good three year olds in France. Which, as I say, in, in the back end in the autumn. You probably want to side with it. Do you still want to side with it by the spring? Don't know so much, yeah, but yeah, McManus has got him now, so Fred Winter might well be there, mightn't it? Yeah, it was it was quite weird to see a horse that um when you're reading form and one of them had turned into being a stallion, they don't often get better. Yeah, well, first two actually, is... first two in that uh, that yeah. grade one in November are both at stud now. Yeah, so Milantino I like for the Fred Winter, and I think if he runs well, and they'll see the colours and the price will disappear, so get in there early. Um, the Novice Handicap Chase, which is still on the card and still a great race, even though they robbed us of the Novice Handicap Chase at the Cheltenham Festival for the Mayor's Chase. I've still not got over that, but I'm hoping Theatre Man can win. He is... Um, he's an interesting horse because he's dropping down in trip and he's been running well all season. I don't think he's necessarily looked like he doesn't stay, but he's been ridden from the front and I wonder whether this horse could be ridden a bit more aggressively from the front and try and try and find the others out that way. He's on a really good mark off 134. I think he's winnable off that mark. This is a really competitive race and if he could pull that off, it'd be interesting. But he looked really good value at 13-2. And then all the way at the bottom, we've got the horse, perhaps I would probably say I'm most excited about of any in training, which is Gidley Park. Mm. I've got this horse for the Ballymore. I am praying to God that, that Saturday goes well. Um, I did many pre-season visits at the start of the season. And, and to be honest with you, when you get to January, most of the time you're looking at them going, and that's not quite worked out and that's not quite worked out. This is the one that has. I, this was the one if you'd have said to me, who's the one you're going to bank on? It would have been Gidley Park. I loved what he did at Chepstow. He's looked really good. Ties warm times in with range, who we discussed earlier. I hope it all goes well. He's even money. There's not much value there because this looks a good race, but I do think he'll win um, and and hopefully go on to bigger, better things. There we go. Plenty of other races to look forward to at Cheltenham on Saturday, and there's a great insight from James Stevens. Keith Melrose, anything for you this weekend? Maybe at Cheltenham, maybe elsewhere? Uh, well, I had I always have a good look at that twelve forty race that James talked about with Theatre Man, and he would have been the one I'd have put up uh, had we been covering that race. Um, it's so competitive that I wouldn't particularly venture a bit myself. It just it always works out really well that race, so definitely watch that one back uh, when you get the chance. Uh, the only I've only got one other bet away from the telly races is in set your watches early because it's going to be the first race at Donny the eleven fifty. It's a massive drop in grade for Fernando Civilla, who won this race two years ago off a much higher. Mark, uh, he's been running in much better races so far this year. You know, not not been looking quite the horse he was, but he won the game spirit. You know, less than a year ago, uh, and mid season break just to freshen him up. Ned Fox taking off another five. He's effectively running off 143 against horses like Malistic and Warlord, and you know, on their day they can be useful, smart horses. But I've not been seeing much from them recently, and. This just could looks like the day. It's a fifty grand race that he's won before. It just looks like Venetia's had this in mind for Fernando Sevilla. He's chucked in on form that's less than a year old, uh, so he's the one for me away from the telly. No, eleven fifty at Donny. Eleven fifty at Doncaster, Fernando Sevilla for Keith and Brett. You're going to be at Cheltenham this weekend. We've mentioned the the Triumph Trial race, Burdett Road. Is you've got some specials on the website? Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to that race. It's a, a proper clash, isn't it? Burdett Road and, and Sergino. If you go to Seven Barrows, Sergino is has already won the triumph. Uh, if you think Burdett Road can win this trial on Saturday and follow up with success in the trial, we're currently 13 to 2. So we've got a special offer if you go on to, um, to univet.co.uk. And also interested in there, James's thoughts on, on Gidley Park. He runs in that, that 10 past four. We're actually price boosting him um, as well. 
as, as, as James has, has already alluded to, that if range wins or runs well in the in the in the River Donna but Donny, that of course would, would really um, enhance his claims in that race. And just give a few details about some other extra place races as well. We are ten extra places each way in the twelve forty at Chatham. We've just been discussing that, and the twelve fifty five at Doncaster, and we've already touched of course on the three fifty. Donny as well, so three extra place races on those ITV races um, today. But now I'm looking forward to. I think Sergino six to four might not be a bad price, you know. Okay. Well, I, it's inter- I've, I'm going to embarrass myself here. I've backed Burdett Road for the Champion Hurdle, NRMB because he's not going to run. Uh, he's only easy runs if Constitution Hill doesn't, and he smacks Sergino about on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And if he does, he won't be 33s, which is the NRMB price. He'll be. You know, a little bit of two or something. So I've packed him in. I don't expect to get my money back, but uh, yeah, and, and he was so he did everything wrong in that Milantino race. Everything out the back. You're not meant to win races like that from there. And to have and knowing that he's got the form on the flat that he does, it could just be the horse to ignite the British two mile hurdle division. Constitution Hill aside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think a few actually on social media have made point of that, that this all should be in the champion hurdle. So we'll just see what kind of performance we see from him on Saturday. And Brett's mentioned all the Unibet offers. You can go check unibet.co.uk to find out more on all of those, along with the terms and conditions. Right, it's time for the best bets for the weekend. Last weekend wasn't the worst weekend in the world. Tom Park, Nurse Susan, put that up a really good price considering the price it ended up going off. He put it up at 9-2 to two and went off around 6-4, to four, didn't it? We had uh, Oh So Grand, uh, one at Lingford for us on the all-weather. Brett was unfortunately part of the uh, Venetia Williams kind of unlucky story day with um, Ferro Bamboo. We also had big mentions for Jello, but obviously Venetia ended up landing uh, the big race there with Long Press, which was the main one, and we were glad to see that. So it wasn't a bad weekend for Naps last weekend, but we're going to make it just as good this weekend. So I will start off, Brett, with you. Who's going to be the best bet this weekend? So we're going to Cheltenham in the 115, and it is Excello for Nicky Henderson. Only had two runs for the Masters, seven bar- barrows so far. Very impressive at Ascot last time, that graduation chase. Handicap debut off 146. Seeing score, he jumps well, and I'm thinking he can bring home the bacon uh, in the 115. So Excello for me at Cheltenham. OK, Excello for Brett. Keith Melrose, your nap will be? It seems weird to put up an app that you've backed Savers against, but that's the nature of that great Yorkshire chase this time around. Captain Orr in a 3.15 at Donny. Yeah, I think there'll be plenty of us agreeing that that wouldn't be the worst bet in the world. James Stevens, let's hear yours. Also at Doncaster, destroy the evidence in the 2.40. Brings near enough the best form. We'll, we'll like this ground, and I think the experience will be crucial. OK, and I'm going to go with the Cleve Hurdle, 3.35 at Cheltenham. And I'm going to put Paisley Park in there. Like I said, I think this is his big day. I think this could be the last big win. Uh, I was really impressed by the way this horse has finished second the last two times. I think he was actually beaten by the best British stayer we've probably got in Cran by the last time at Ascot. And I just got a feeling with this field and, and the level of depth to it, I just think that Paisley Park is certainly the one that could be winning this at around 130 with Unibet. So there's the best bets for the weekend. They're on screen. Um, as always, they will be boosted at the time of upload from this video. So um, you can get all of our naps boosted for the weekend. Quickly, I've got about three minutes left. We always do this at the end of the show. What's everyone up to for the weekend? I can probably guess what James Stevens is up to this weekend. Saturday, he'll be at Cheltenham. And who knows what he's doing on Sunday? Sunday, I'm watching Newport County, not Manchester United out of the FA Cup. So ah, there we on. go. Yeah, I was going to say, I completely forgot FA Cup weekend, but uh, you'll be at Newport, so Cheltenham and Newport for for James Stevens. Keith Melrose, every time I come to you on this segment, you always say I catch you on the worst weekends because you're doing something yeah, you completely do. dull. Something dull. Is it the I'll same probably, once again? Uh, there'll probably be some dullness because there's not any much that uh, planned that much, but we're going to be having people around for some Burns Night stuff on Saturday. My wife's arranged something like that, so we'll be doing some of that, bit of haggis, bit of whiskey. Uh, so it won't be all uh, work and no play. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's not not the biggest weekend I'll ever be, but I'll, I'll get a chance to watch the racing, that means. Okay, watch the race and celebrate Burns tonight. Look, I think it's quite an entertaining weekend, if you ask me, Keith. And Brett, you're going to be at Cheltenham on Saturday. Anything else planned for the weekend? Well, as it's Burns weekend, I've just started watching, and you probably will know it's not radio, it's Two Doors Down. Have you watched that on the iPlayer? My <laughs> wife watches it a lot. I, I don't particularly, but she I'll be watching that, you know. I'll take a tea. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, as Elaine C. Smith is in that, she used to play uh, Rabsy Nisbet's wife. That's um, how I know her. She was she's been on the telly in Scotland for years and years. In fact, uh, the husband uh, he was he was in Gregory's Girl. He's been on the telly for yonks. I've only just discovered it, but I've got to the sixth series. I just I, I watch about two episodes every night. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, still game was the Scottish sitcom of recent years that came down yeah. and was actually really really good. And two doors down was all right, but I'd still check out still game if you like a bit of Scottish humour. Uh, uh, <laughs> so Brett's going to be at Cheltenham and chilling on the sofa watching the TV this weekend, and I'm going to be watching the racing. And I've actually got I'm looking at the dartboard actually behind James right now. I've been made it my New Year's resolution. I'm playing 45 minutes per day at the moment. My aim is to become really good at the darts. So you won't see me on the Alexandra Palace stage in December. I can tell you that now, but my aim is to come really good. But I imagine James Stevens has a bit about him on the dartboard behind him. Um, I'm sure he's a, a decent enough player. Not for a while, I'm afraid. Uh, Not for a while. Well, there could be a racing post uh, darts night coming up soon where I try and take on James. We'll wait and see. Um, as always, do like, comment, share and subscribe. Get your naps in in the comments down below. I will go through as many of them as possible. Big thanks as always to James Stevens, Keith Marrows, and Brett Williams from Unibet. We'll be back again next Friday uh, with a preview of the weekend action as well as the Dublin Racing Festival. So looking forward to going through all that. Uh, gamble responsibly and we'll see you again.